<laughs> so, uh, my talk is called The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. See what I did there? Yes. Yeah. So, it has zero to do with Zelda, but I just really like the name. I kept chuckling every time I thought about it. I couldn't help myself. I just thought that's freaking awesome. And uh, we got to do this at work as well. <laughs> so, thanks to Paigey down the front. It's awesome. So, um, I apologize to anyone who came here just to hear a talk about Zelda and Ember because that's about as much as you get. I'm really, really sorry about that. What I'm actually trying to, hoping to tell you, um, a while back Jamie sort of said on the forums that one of the, one of the bits of feedback he got about this meetup is that there was people kind of wanting some more begin beginner type talks. So I thought this may be useful. Um, so it's really about what happens when you click on a link to um, in an app. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> um, so it's, it's something we always do, like in all our web apps, we've got loads of links, but um, I'm not sure how often people actually stop and think or how many people actually understand what really happens under the covers when you click on a link to. Um, and I came across a tweet a year or so ago from Alex Machnier that kind of had this big uh, flow diagram. It's like, holy crap, that's actually what happens in the router. And I thought that's kind of cool. So I just wanted to explain a little bit about that, really. So first of all, who am I? I'm Aaron. Um, you can get me at either of those two places there. Um, I am one of the maintainers of the uh, Ember CLI deploy thing that uh, Tom talked about earlier. So um, if you're interested in deployment of your Ember apps, um, jump onto the, the repo there. Uh, we've got some cool, cool stuff coming. So uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm this, guy's little, this, this little guy's dad. That's Noah. He always features in my talk. So, uh, so Link2, um, what does it actually do? Has anyone actually stopped to think about what it does? I mean, it puts a link on the page, but nope. OK, well, you might all learn something, hopefully. Um, so traditionally, I guess, when we have a link in our server-side apps, it's just an href. Um, pretty simple, really. It, it just does a get, get request in the browser to, to get the next page that you're going to. That's cool. Um, but in an Ember app, we have something slightly different. It produces the same sort of thing. Looks pretty similar, actually. Um, but what does it actually do? Here's the, the, the picture of the flow diagram I saw. This is what a link to does. Simple clicking on a link. I saw that and I went, wow. So um, I kind of want to explain a little bit about what sort of happens there. So imagine a scenario where we have this sort of router set up in our app. We've got two routes. We've got slash about slash FAQ. And we've got slash about. Uh, sorry, slash users, slash some ID, slash profile. So we can go from the FAQ page to, to a user profile page. Um, things to note are we've got some nested routes here. So um, we're going to have an about route and an FAQ route. Um, and our user route here has a, a dynamic segment, which is the user ID. So this is all pretty standard stuff. I'm sure you guys have all seen that. So this is kind of laying the land of, of what, we're, what we're looking at here. So if we sort of look. Um, at what Ember objects we sort of have here. Uh, we've got our two routes about FAQ and users one profile. Um, with that comes, well, the application route. We always get that for free every time. Um, we get an about route by convention, which uh, is responsible for the about part of the URL there. And we get an about FAQ route. Um, and then over on an, uh, the other one here, we have the user route, which uh, that one there, and our user profile route. So they're the routes we would probably see in our app for these two, um, two routes. So, hold on, did I miss something? I did. There we go. So imagine we start out on the about FAQ route, we're sitting on there, and there's a link on there to say the user profile of the current, the current route. So our link to might look like this. We're going to link to the, the user profile route, and we're going to pass in the current user, which is a model object. We're passing that in. So that's kind of important to remember that we're, we're providing the, the model for this profile, user profile we're going to. Um, and we have our link on the page. So what actually happens? So basically, the router kicks in, um, and a transition object is created at the point we click. And that's essentially like a promise that travels with us all the way through until we've gotten to our, our destination. And there are sort of three phases that the, the router goes through. The first one is the will transition phase. And the second one is the model resolution and validation phase. 
And the last one is the sync, exit, enter, setup phase. So I'll explain each of those as we go. <coughs> so let's start with a uh, little transition phase. So basically, what happens first of all when you click that link is it goes to the current routes that you're on and fires the will transition action. So this is an action some of you might have even um, implemented. You don't need to, but if you want to do anything in your route before we exit out of it and, and go somewhere else, this is the place to do it. So the route is going to go to each of your current routes of where you are and fire off this, this will transition action. So we can see it starts from the outermost uh, route, the FAQ route. It's going to come in here and fire it. And you can see we're passing that transition object that I was talking about. This is something that will travel with us to the end. So at this point, you might want to do something like check that the user has entered all the mandatory fields. And if not, you actually don't want to go to the next page. You want to sort of stay where you are. So you can sort of abort that, a transition, that transition at this stage um, by calling transition.abort. Essentially, the router will call it on the FAQ route. If all's good, we haven't aborted or anything. We go on to the next one, and we, we call will transition on the about route. And then if that's all good, we go to the application route and call will transition on there. So these are, these are all things that happen along the way, giving us an opportunity to, to bail out of that transition at any time. If the transition isn't halted um, and everything's good, then we move on to the model resolution validation phase. So this is a phase that most of you probably would have seen. Um, <coughs> the routes um, allow you to override a few different hooks that you've probably seen before model, model, after model. Um, but a lot of people actually don't really even know what they're doing or, or why they're being called. Um, some people I've talked to think the model is actually just setting the model on the route, but it's actually just a hook that you're overriding that Ember expects to be there. And if it's not, it has some sort of default functionality. So the idea of this phase is to collect the model objects for the route and then resolve them all. Um, and in this case, we have two routes. We have the user route and the user profile route. So it's going to go through and try and resolve what the model objects are for each of those routes so it can set them on the controller. Um, and I guess it's important to note, if you return a, a promise from, from any of those hooks, before model, model, and after model, uh, the route is actually going to halt until that, until that uh, resolves. So if you've got a call to an API in your model hook that takes 10 seconds to load, your Ember app's not doing anything until that comes back which is where you probably start to see the, the loading substates, but that's kind of another, another call, another discussion. But basic, essentially, it'll wait till those promises resolve until we get in. So after the start of this thing, uh, this route, it comes in and fires the before model hook of your user route. Um, if you haven't implemented it, that's cool. It's uh, just an empty function under the covers, but you can override that to do something. You might want to check if the current user is logged in. If they're not, you want to abort that transition and you want to go to the login page. Um, we don't want to go to the user profile because we're not logged in. Um, but if that's all cool, then <coughs> the next thing this one's going to do is actually call the after model hook. So you'll notice we skipped over the model hook because when, in our link to, we provided that, that user, that user object. We said we want to link to the user profile and here's the the user model. So because we provided the model, Ember doesn't need to go and resolve what the model is for this route. It's been provided already. So it's, um, so it's skipped over that one. So if uh, the after model of that, that route is OK, we jump into <coughs> the profile route, and we fire off the before model model and the after model hooks. Is this making any sense to anyone? Yeah? Um, everyone's probably familiar with these hooks, right? So you don't, you can, you can implement as many, as little as, as many as these as you, as you like. Um, it's not like you have to put all these in your roots. So then, if all the um, all the models have resolved, okay, um, and there's been no sort of errors thrown or anything like that, we go into the sync, exit, et enter, setup phase. Um, so this is where it comes to clean up. So we're, we're, we were in the about FAQ route. We're just trying to go to the user profile route. We've resolved all our models. We know what our model data is for the new route we're going to. We need to start to clean up now. So first goes in and, and calls deactivate. Again, it's another hook you can uh, implement. I've never had to implement this, to be honest. But if you want to do something on your way out of a route, here's a place to do it. So we can see that it, it goes in there calls it in the about FAQ route. So you can see, again, it's going from the rightmost route 
back in, just deactivating all the routes we're currently on before we go and activate the new ones we're going into. Oh, I don't know. That's all right. um, then we come into our user route. We have a chance to do something here on activate. Again, I haven't had to do anything there, but setup control is pretty common. Most people do this. Uh, this is where, um, by default, the, the router will take the model that you've returned from your model hook and set it on your controller. Um, and then around this stage, it'll, it'll ren call render template, say, here's the controller, here's the template, go and render yourself. But this gives you a bit of a, a chance to do some other things, set up some other controllers, maybe set some other data on your controllers if you need to. An important thing with this one is the router does have some default functionality for setup controller. So if you are going to override this, make sure you call super on it because by default it will set the model that you've returned from your model hook on the controller for this um, route. Um, and if you don't call uh, super dot, no, we'll call super on it, then you're not going to get that model set. So that's kind of a little gotcha there. So after doing it on there, we end up calling activate on our profile route and activate uh, setup control on our profile route. So there was a lot of stuff happening. Um, transition complete. Um, and at any point in, those, in that model resolution phase or the, the setup con um, the sync phase, if an error occurs, uh, the transition's aborted. Um, and then the error action will be called on your route. So I don't know if you've, ever, if you've ever implemented that or seen that, but basically if you have an actions hash with an error function, that will get called on your route. If that's not handled there, it'll bubble up to the next route, bubble all the way up. So that's what will happen um, if you throw an error or reject the promise in any of those things. So that was a whole bunch of stuff and diving into like little bits at a time. So this here is trying to just look at it from a higher level of what we actually did there. From clicking on that one link, what actually happens? So basically, we, we go and fire off any will transition hooks from our current routes that we're currently on, the about and the FAQ routes. If they're all good, we go through and we resolve all the models on our new routes. We find out what they are. Um, we go and get the user if we need to, or in this case, it was provided. Um, we go and get any profile stuff that we need to, and we resolve those in our before model, model, and after model hooks. Next thing is we go and deactivate all our old routes, the ones we're leaving. Um, and then finally, we come in and we activate um, any of the, the new routes we're going into. We call setup controller. We put our model stuff, uh, model objects onto the controller and we render the templates. Um, and that's about it. Does anyone have any questions? Just a question. Uh, okay. In terms of the um, synchronous behavior that you know, basically you, you want to gonna wait until the models are completed before it moves to finish the transition. Yeah. In your example, you had the user object and the profile object, or yeah. the user model and the and profile yeah. model. Uh, are those asynchronous? And then they just both have to be resolved? Uh, so the first one, no, it, it'll, it is it'll fire the user route, and then it'll wait for a uh, promise to be resolved before. Even if you have a promise on your before model and model, the before model will wait before it hits the, the model, and then it'll do the, the after model. And because like the after model hook is actually past the model object as an argument, so um, yeah, it waits till it's resolved. And so then it will go into the profile route. But are there any real dependencies between those two different independent models? I mean, it seems like you could do those in parallel. Well, OK, so if you think of um, uh, users um, and then user, the users route will fire and get the list of users. And then your user route will generally um, get an ID from, like it's not going to go to the server and get it. It's going to get it from your cache list. So there is a kind of a dependency there, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, you're going to wait till you've got your list of users, say, in the data in the cache, and then going to get the user for ID 1, it's right there. You don't need to make it. So yeah, I suppose way, there's, there's an nested relationship. Yeah, and, which are, dependent, so and that's exactly the reason they are nested in the router is because there yeah. is a relationship there. Yeah, if yeah. they weren't related like that, then you wouldn't nest them. You can still have the nested URLs, but if, they were, if, you, if you clicked on a user and went to a different page, you don't need the list of users, right. so there's no real relationship there. And that's, I guess, the intricacies between nested templates and nested URLs in the router, which is another discussion as well. Right. Yeah. I just wondering, like, are errors only relevant to building up a route, or do they also occur when they're raised on the exit? They the can be raised in the exit as well, yeah, and the transition will abort at that stage. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Or you can call transition.abort if you if you want to as well. Yeah. What's, what's the best practice in terms of the controller? Is it is it is it is it best practice to keep um, everything in the model as opposed to the controller? So like do all the logic that's required on the model or um, or, or just check all the things on the controller? Uh, I don't know what the best practice is. Um, I generally return what my model is from the model and just try and make that a one-liner, like here's the model, and then if I need to do anything else, do that and set up controller. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I try not to do much in setup controller if I can help it, because I feel like, yeah, I'm not really sure what the best practice is, to be honest. As little as possible. Yeah, so basically. It's yeah. going I mean, away. The, the idea yeah. of the root. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of the root. My question is that I've just got it, I guess. What's that? OK, right. Yeah, what are you really trying to say? So actually, on that point, there's an RFC at the moment yeah. for what rootable components will yeah. look like. So if anyone's interested in having a, a little glimpse of what what your roots will look like in M2, that's the current best guess. Yeah. It's, it's pretty likely it'll go that way. And it's existing roots won't break in M2. <coughs> They'll carry on working more or less. But there are the the idea of a model that's being exploded out to like. Uh, Um, so I've run into things in the past where there's differences between clicking on a on a link to go to a route and accessing the route directly through like a page view. Like, can you talk about um, uh, So I guess if you think about it, like, I don't know what issues you had or differences, but like if you think about it, if you're going via the web, like clicking on a link, um, so say for instance you have a list of posts and you go want to go, you click on a link to go on a particular post. Um, at that point, you will already have your collection of posts. So um, you can go into the new post, you're just really pulling something from the cache. But if you're going from the URL, it's actually going to fire the, the route for your post route and then your particular post. So you can, I have seen issues there where it's not exactly the same because when you transition from posts to a particular post, you're not activating and firing that post route because it's already been fired and you're just becoming more specific by going to the post route. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Whereas you're yeah, coming from yeah, the URL, you're, you're actually firing. I think the sequence of events is yeah. slightly different because you've already got the model. Exactly, right? yeah. So different stuff's to, actually yeah. happening. <laughs> well, more stuff's happening when you go in by the URL because you're essentially loading from a clean slate. So it needs to activate the application route, the post route, and then the post route. Whereas if you've come in via a link, you've already activated the application route because you've got there somehow. You've got to the posts page. So you've activated that route, it doesn't need to reactivate it. So there is sl slightly different stuff happening under the covers and you can get different issues in that way. Cool. I don't know if that answers your question. Also, there's two ways of, of doing routing. Some people prefer to do it via link to helper, whereas others, they just do it behind the scenes. They yep. just, just essentially trigger an action. Yep, yep, that's another way to do it. Right. Yep. Uh, but you know, from, from the like, perspective of SEO, it's really bad privacy to Yeah. 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 Undercovers that'll be doing a uh, similar thing. So we're basically creating a transition object and transitioning between. But yeah, in terms of SEO and stuff, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? So if you're doing say link to users slash ID, yep. I know you can pass. Like the literal model is yep. set you know, linked to. Can you pass the ID? You as can, well? yeah, 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 yeah. But I think you need to then implement the model hook. So the model hook. I'm pretty sure you get the ID, yeah, and, and then you need to return the model at that stage. But yeah, you can pass the ID. <laughs> as well. Yeah. Although it may, because by default uh, the model hook is implemented to to search for a dynamic segment and use that as the ID to get a uh, re resolve the model. So it may actually do it for you. Um, Magically, because that's what happens if you like don't don't create a, a root and it auto generates it for you. Yeah. It will um return for you. It kind of knows that when there's a dynamic segment, you probably want to go retrieve a model for the same name with that ID. Yeah. Can what else? You play the presentation very fast. Yeah, because sure. I have the feeling yes. that there is. So um, this is who I am. That's where you can get me. And um, <laughs> I wanted to give the people that came for Zelda a little bit of something. So um, yeah, here's a surprise for you. 
<laughs> this took me forever. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>